so Neeraj, I want to, you know, talk about the beginning. You know, you were at Google, you were in a business development position, and uh, you met the guys at WhatsApp to actually see if you could do a deal with them. Right. So uh, this goes back around four years. I used to acquire companies for Google, and my job was to meet uh, up-and-coming entrepreneurs and see what they're doing. I happened to meet Jan and Brian, the co-founders of WhatsApp. They were very difficult to find, actually, so I had to somehow dig them out from somewhere. Uh, and actually, that defines who we are as a company. We are very quiet, we are very low profile, we don't actually do any PR. You'll never see us on the stage. Um, and I happened, it was my good luck that I happened to meet them. Um, and when I spent some time with them, I saw that they're building a company which is very different from what you typically see in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And they, I think the biggest thing that struck me about them was they were trying to build a global company sitting in Silicon Valley. So they didn't care about, they were not building a product for Silicon Valley or the US. They were actually building a product for India and Brazil and Middle East and Africa and everywhere else. And coming I mean, from India, having grown up here, mm -hmm. their passion to connect billions of people was something which really resonated with me. So is it that they were using even low-tech technologies right. to connect with people? So what about their approach was global? Right. Because a lot of big companies are also global. Right. Yeah, great question. Um, they started looking at low-end phones way before anyone else started looking at low-end phones, right? Because they knew countries like India and Brazil and Africa, people can't afford a, an iPhone or, or a high-end Samsung phone, right? So they. We supported Nokia phones very early. We supported Blackberries. We supported low-end Android phones very early, in, like three, four years back, when nobody was actually paying attention to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because for us, if our product needs to connect a billion people, um, you should not be able to, you should not, you should not think about what your friends use. You should just install the product and you should be able to use it, right? That's mm -hmm. that's called ubiquity, right? If yeah. you're building only for iPhones and Android, you lose that edge. So right. for, for them, it was important to connect everybody in the world. So beyond that mission, we are still far away from it, but we hope to do that one day. Yeah. So what was it, I mean, obviously for you to decide to leave Google that right. everybody knew about and join this company that nobody knew about, uh, I, I'm sure was not the most intuitive thing to do. No. How many people were there at WhatsApp when you joined? Right. So we were 20 people mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. There was uh, all engineering or customer support. Um, they were getting bombarded by a lot of business opportunities from carriers, from uh, OEMs, from venture capitalist companies and stuff like that. And they wanted somebody to help them take that load off. They're en engineers, right? So they wanted to spend all their time behind the desk coding or deploying product or making uh, answering customer support emails. They didn't want to spend time in the meetings, right? So that was the reason why they were interested in having somebody like me come in and, and run the business side of, com of the company. Okay. And the reason why, I think now I look back and I don't find a very good reason why I left Google. It was very, it was very I think, gut driven. Uh, it felt like these people are special. Uh, the mission was very special actually and very, very close to my heart. And for me, Google, I, I was there for four years already and it was feeling like a big company, even though everything was great. Google is a great company and does amazing stuff. Uh, but I, I was not very close to the impact that Google was having. Like myself personally was not close to, mm -hmm. like if people are using Google search or maps, I'm not building it. I'm not very close to that. I think that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to be at a company where what I do is actually I can see people using it and hopefully change their lives. So when you joined, this was uh, two years ago that you Three joined? Years Three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. So at that time, what were some of the first things you had to do from a business point of view? I mean, how many users were there at that time and how many are there now? I think we were close to 30, 40 million active users that, at that time. At that time, 30, 40 million active users. And right. today? I think the last announced number was 600 million plus. 600 million. Right. And how many of them are from India, you, you say? I think the last announced number for us in India is 70 million. 70 million. Active users, people who use us in a, every month. Yeah. So which is the largest country India as a country? India is actually a India is one of the largest countries yes. for you, okay. Yeah. And so how much of that valuation 
will be donated back to India. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm working on it. So, <laughs> so, you know, one of the other things is that, you know, you've been, you from Google went there, you went there to actually do a deal with them. Right, so right? the story was... So, but, like, but imagine, be right. on the Google side for a second, how much would you have paid for them? At that time? Yeah. How much were you going to pay for them? I think low tens of millions, maybe. Like 10 to 15 million or something. Maybe. We didn't talk about numbers, but I wouldn't, like, we, there were six people at the time in the company. Yeah. So. so, you know, when you first went there, what were some of the first things you had to do? When I joined the company? Yeah. Like, what were the things that were coming that they just didn't want to deal with, and there were business things that you had to do? I had to order furniture for the company. Yeah. Uh, make That's sure, what I want you to talk about. Make sure people have lunch on time, so order food. Um, pretty much do everything that, you know, as a founder you have to do. Like, even though I was not the founder of the company, uh, but I took a lot of stuff off their plate, which they were doing. Um, so the range of things that I had to do was to order furniture, order food, make sure people are happy to help raise money for the company. So it was like the two extreme ends. Um, yeah. So everything in the middle from talking to operators, convincing them to mm -hmm. um, give free data or affordable data to people to use WhatsApp. So mm -hmm. over the last three years, we actually convinced more than 80 operators around the globe to either give, give free data for WhatsApp or give very affordable data for WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. right? So we've done a lot of work on the business side of things to, to make sure we actually enable WhatsApp um, users to use more and easily uh, the product. So what is the business uh, a decision or, uh, a, you know, series of actions that you guys took that helped it to go from, say, 30 million to 600 million? Were there like one or two key decisions that were made? I think the key decision was to not enforce any businessy, businessy things on the company, right? So. If you look at who, what WhatsApp is today, even today, right? It's a very product engineering focused company, right? Out of 80 people that are today in the company, uh, the majority are actually engineers. So actually you build the product or you do customer support. So you help, yeah. you know, answer some emails or you know, questions about the product. So we wanted to minimize any distraction. So I think for us business, it was very important for us to understand, for me to understand that business is not the core of the company, right? The core of the company is the product, right? But as a business person, you can actually help product become more ubiquitous. You can do deals to, to make it grow better, faster, and all of those things, right? So I would say the biggest thing for us to understand was to not enforce any business decisions on the company yeah. because we wanted to keep it pure. At the same time, on the, from the sidelines, help the company grow. Yeah. So, so the, now we come to the final thing of this. All these offers have been coming through. What about this what one? Offers? Uh, offers what to offers? To buy the company okay. have been coming through. But what was it finally you kind of said, okay, we want to be part of, what, what, right. part of Facebook? What was the emotional connect finally? Right. So I think when Jan and Brian started the company, the two co-founders, um, they never wanted to be entrepreneurs. I think when I asked them why you started this, we, we never wanted to be entrepreneurs. We wanted to build a really cool product that is used by millions of, millions of users, right? So for them, it was as simple as that. It was like the joy of creation. It was not to build a company or have thousands of employees or have a valuation. Like they're very simple people and they just wanted to have a product that works really well and connects a lot of people. That's it, right? So that's how it started. That was the mission. It still is the mission of the company, right? Uh, so along the years, we kept on ignoring everything that came our way because we thought that our job is just getting started. So selling our company would be doing a disservice to the product that we are building or to the users that we have, right? Till the point we met Mark Zuckerberg, who is the founder and the CEO of Facebook. Um, over the series of meetings, it almost took two years for Mark and Jan to come to this point where they felt that if you look at the two companies, they basically do the same thing or they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to connect the, connect the world, right? So the mission was so close and Mark has built an amazing company and he's connected more than a billion users, right? 
So there, there's always this respect for what he has done and what he's doing, right? So over the years, we, we thought and we came to this conclusion that if we become one, we will be able to execute much better and faster as WhatsApp. So we're still staying separate as a service. So the products are not getting merged, but we'll have a lot more resources from Facebook and a lot of learnings from them mm -hmm. to actually execute faster and better. So that's where I think it came together. So the last question I have is there is a, uh, there's a way in which you actually signed the deal. So can you share with us right. how the deal was signed? Sure. So Jan, um, who's the CEO and co-founder of WhatsApp, he came to, he's a Ukrainian immigrant, um, and he moved to the US, uh, to the Silicon Valley actually, when he was 14. He didn't have any money, when he, when he moved to the US, he was like doing small jobs, he was living on welfare when he started. Uh, so he's seen a lot of hard times. He went to college. Uh, as, as somebody from Eastern Europe, there's a lot of focus on, on education, just like India, right? So, so he did well, and he, he find, found a job at Yahoo as his first job, and he did really well there. So he's seen his life from a 14-year-old immigrant in the U.S., living on welfare, having practically no money, to building this amazing company with millions of users. And finally, when the deal was happening, uh, as a, as a, you know, just to bring him back to his, where he started, we took him to the same welfare center where he used to get his money every month to sign the deal. Yeah. So it was a very emotional moment for him and for everyone. So, so that's how we, you know, Great. signed the deal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.